Hi there, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about camshafts. These, I've got two camshafts here. These are from V8s. So very similar camshafts been used pretty much on all the Bentley V8s from when they were introduced in 1960, early 1960s on the S2. Um, this one here in the front is a used camshaft. This has been returned to us as a core, um, potentially to be reconditioned. Uh, this is a new one. The difference between these two, as you can see, this is unused, so it's got, still got the, the blackening on it, but after a bit of wear that'll come off and it'll come polished like this. The, um, the difference between these two camshafts, as you can see, is this one has an extra lobe, one at the front and one at the back. Uh, that's to run the brake pumps. So after the shadow was introduced, uh, they used the hydraulic pumps for the braking and suspension system all the way up to the R&R series. So this camshaft hasn't got those pumps because the Silver Cloud uses servo assisted brakes and not hydraulics. So, so that's the difference between these two cams. Uh, brought the used one up so we can show you some uh, issues that you can get with camshafts. Um, so the, they stay pretty much the same all the way throughout the V8. It, it's, it's not an overhead cam. So it drives a follower. This is driven through the center of the engine and it drives a follower which pushes the push rod up into the cylinder head which pushes on the rocker shaft or the rocker arm which then pushes the valve open inside the combustion chamber. Um, slight differences that happen obviously like I say the brake pump lobes on the S-types uh, they're introduced for the Silver Shadow series then at the late Silver Shadow 2 on the B-series engine, they changed the back flange, I believe it's the back. Um, the, the front of the camshaft here is where the timing gear is bolted on. So what, what a camshaft does is it opens and closes the valves in time with the pistons coming up and down so that you have the right flow of gases coming in. So as the piston comes down, the inlet valve opens, it, allow, it that draws in the air and fuel mixture, then the inlet valve closes, the piston comes up to the top and compresses the mixture, spark plug goes off, power stroke forces the piston down, and as the piston gets to the bottom, then the exhaust valve starts to open, so as the piston comes back up to the top, it drives the exhaust gases out through the exhaust. That means that it has to be in perfect time because that's all happening very quickly. So uh, there's a number of different ways that people, uh, companies will use to time the camshaft to the crankshaft. Uh, sometimes you have a toothed belt. Um, most modern small engines will have a toothed belt, um, which is catastrophic if it fails because obviously the pistons carry on moving and the valves stay where they are and you end up having pistons smash into valves. That can happen on any setup, but a, a rubber belt is probably the easiest thing to break. The other common method is a chain, which is stronger than a belt, so you know less likely for failure. But what Rolls Royce use is a gear. So, in because this is a four-stroke engine, the piston has to move up and down four times, or stroke four times, for one cycle. So the valves only open once. For every two strokes of the piston so each valve opened once for each two strokes of the piston so you have to slow the camshaft down to half the speed of the crankshaft so the gear on the cam is twice the size of the gear on the crank so what you have is you have these holes at the end of the crank uh, the camshaft where the gear bolts onto they are actually offset so you can only fit the cam gear on in one position you also have the same situation with the crankshaft gear so the crank gear can only go on in one position i think it's on a woodruff key and what that and then you've got a mark on the cam gear and a mark on the crank gear that you line up and effectively what that means is you can only put it on one way that means that the valves will be opening up at the right time for the pistons so that that's critical if you ever are to do that when you do fit the gears always turn the engine over by hand just to make sure there's no interference between the valves and the pistons. 
So uh, the the next thing to talk about really is the problems that you might get with camshafts. So if you have noisy top end, you might find that your tappets are noisy. Um, a lot of the time, if you have worn lobes on your camshaft, what it can do is having the lobe worn flat will cause the tappet to not turn as it's pressed up. So when these are made or remanufactured, there is actually a taper cut that the lobe is, is at an angle. And what that does is as it lifts the tappet, it actually turns it. The idea of that is that you've not got one constant place of wear. So you're constantly turning the tappet. Um, what happens is when the lobes wear, they can wear flat and that causes tappet just to not turn when it's, when it's running and that can wear down the tappet and wear down the camshaft even more. Um, the Arnage T's, the twin turbo Arnage's suffer with tappet failure. And what happens is, no one really knows why, but it's often one of the back lobes. It will work fine, you won't know there's anything wrong with it until the tappet fails completely and you get a knock. And you dismantle the engine, take the tappet cover off, and you'll find that actually the tappet is worn down a quarter of an inch and the lobe's worn down and rough because it's just eating through the bottom of the tappet. Now, it still work just fine until it goes so far through the tappet that it hits the inside and the oil leaks out. These tappets are a hydraulic um, self-leveling tappet. So what happens is this valve, this top inside here, the height of it is determined by the car. So you put these in dry and when these are dry, you can actually push this against its own spring pressure and um, it will be loose. So when you first fire the car up, you'll get a kind of rattle as the oil is forced into these tappets and it finds its height. If you prime these first before you install them on the engine, it will be too high and actually you could risk bending a push rod or something because there is too much, There's, it's over primed, it's too high. Um, so, so you always have to fit a tappet dry and let it self prime. What can happen as well with the, the tappets is if you have done several head gaskets on the car, if the, the head gasket has failed a couple of times and the head has been skimmed, and quite a lot of material has been taken off the head. What that does is it, it lowers the head and it lowers the position of the rocker shaft, which means that effectively your tolerances on the tappet are going further down. The tappets have an area where they can operate and if you over skim the head, you can actually move it down so far that it becomes out of, uh, out of tolerance and then your tappets won't prime properly. And, uh, and, you, and you may not be able to get it to run quietly. Um, effectively, you could run a shorter push rod, but I don't think they make a, a shorter push rod as standard. And on the S-types, I think there are different length push rods that you can use to overcome this problem. But that's, uh, that's one of the issues if you over skim your heads. Um, because of the problem with the low wearing, we always suggest that if you change a set of tappets, uh, you change the camshaft as well, that can, um, if you, if you just put if you get noisy tappets and you put in a set of tappets and then you find that the tappets aren't turning then they're just going to wear out very quickly so it's always recommended to change the camshaft with the tappets uh, always obviously make sure that you've got good oil flow up to the camshaft um, the other thing is the uh, the one of the problems with these is is it's you need quite a lot of access to get the camshaft out. So it comes out from the front and you haven't got enough room in the engine bay for that. So it's pretty much an engine out job to do the camshaft. Um, the back of the camshaft drives the distributor gear. Again, that has to be timed, obviously, because your ignition timing is, uh, is, is just as important. Um, that's pretty much all I can think of to talk about on these camshafts. The, uh, if anyone's got any other questions, please feel free to comment. Um, 
And uh, this, we did the camshaft video uh, as a recommendation from one of the watchers. So any other videos that you're interested in or anything that I've missed out, please do say so in the comments. Um, thanks for watching.